In this lecture, we're going to be performing a um, disaster recovery of the ComServe. We're going to actually restore it to another ComServe. So this is called like a like an out of place restore. You could call it that. But we're essentially going to simulate the fact that our our ComServe is is um, maybe no longer in use. Maybe we um, you know the server we need to deprecate it or get rid of it. Uh, we need to move it to a beefier um, server. And so we're going to simulate this. This works a little differently if it's a um, like an actual outage, right? But the theory is the same, meaning you just restore the deep, um, the ComServe database to another server and you're fine. So there's a couple steps involved here. Uh, first, obviously, you turn off all the services, turn off all the jobs, then you rename the the ComServe database, um, and then you do a recovery. So it's a recovery tool they use in Commvault. Um, so let's take a look at our our DR first. So before you do this, you have to have a DR, right? So in order to get a DR, disaster recovery, um, you just go to all tasks and do a, a disaster recovery backup. We have already, already have a scheduled policy in place for that. And if you wanted to view the job history, you right-click on the ComServe, right-click, go all on view and it's it's actually an admin job history task click on uh, job uh, admin job history and uncheck all that we're going to actually just include jade's data click ok so as you can see we have a lot of jobs here and data aging dr disaster recovery here we go right here um so last completed on the 20th the Disaster recovery. Okay, so we're good, right? One was the 23rd, 24th. We're good, right? And the location of that actual DR, let me show you that right here. Uh, I believe it's under tools. No, storage, configuration. Yeah, configuration, um, DR backup. Click that. Disaster recovery backup. Same thing as DR. I, did, I guess it just cut it short. They said. We can't fit all of the disaster recovery in there, in that space, so we just, you know, shorten it to DR. Here's the settings about your disaster recovery, where it's, you know, where it's pointed to. We have it pointed to our uh, attempt folder on this ComServe here. Um, so if you're, you know, if your ComServe was off, typically you don't do that, right? You'd actually have, like, your, you'd have, a, a, like, a network share somewhere. Typically, that's what you would do. You'd have it off-site somewhere else, right? That's how typically you would have it, a DR. You might have one locally, and then you'd have one um, somewhere else. Okay, so if we just click on, we browse to this, you can actually see it where the folder is, and you'll see a, a bunch of, um, let's see, so temp. Yeah, so temp. You'll see a bunch of folders. This set 057, they're numbered, right? We set ours to 10. Number of full metadata backups to be retained, that's 10. You can name it, to, you can change it to however many you want. In our case, we did um, we did 10. So they're actually not, they're more bigger than 4K, but that's the, the size. So um, let's, for instance, let's just click on one. The most recent one is, well, it's 63. Let's click on that. 62. Okay, well, there is data there actually, so let's actually show that to you. Temp folder, and I think this one here, I believe it was. Yeah, so inside you're going to see a bunch of data, right? You're going to see a bunch of stuff. Um, this is this is really important. I mean, this this file here is really important. This is going to save you a lot of headache, a lot of uh, hours of like work basically what this is 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 like a it's a setting of all the things you have all the pointers um, how how things are set up you know the client names it's very very nice that's the ComServe um, database essentially and the actual file so you have several of them you have all these dump files right so 400 meg and as your ComServe grows and you have more media agents more um, just more you're gonna see this grow bigger 2 gig 3 gig 5 gig what have you um, so 
you know, a lot of these files we'll be actually using in our, in our restore. So yeah, okay, let's close this. We can close this. So we have our DR. We're good there. We have an actual backup, so we're good there. So the next step, actually what I meant was when I said DR, we're not actually DRing it to another server or disaster covering to the same server here. Yeah, um, yeah, I made a mistake on that one actually. Well, what I meant on the other one was um, we're actually doing an out of place move. So if you want to move a comm server from this server to another server, you would go to control panel and then name management. And then we would do the update the comm server. So you'd actually move it, right? Um, yeah. So anyway, let's focus on the DR first. So to perform a disaster recovery of the same comm server you're on now. So the first thing is to make sure we have no jobs running. That's the very first thing. The second thing is we're going to right click on the comm server and go to properties. In the comm cell properties, we're going to click on activity controller or activity control, excuse me. And we're gonna uncheck everything but these, these two right here. It's, you know, uncheck everything but those two. So uncheck everything but the enable job activity and the enable data management. Then click OK, right, yep. The next thing, we wanna go right back into Properties on the ComServe, right click on ComServe, go to Properties. I want to add an additional setting to this. Under Additional Settings, we're going to add one, and it's going to be called um, MM Disable. If you like this video and you want to see more, please jump on to my course, which is, I have two courses. One is at getajobnit.teachable.com, and the other course is on Udemy. It's learn backup and restore with Commvault, get a high paying job. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just type in Gary McNeely or Commvault Whisperer. There's some good content there related to this. If you would, could you click on the subscribe button and click on notifications. Thank you very much.